Hello there and welcome back to the channel. In today's video I want to give you guys some updates about some of the things I've been doing as well as some of the things I've seen. Now as you can see there is a hell of a lot of equipment in front of me at the moment. Yes we have the, the Typhoon H Plus from Unique. The guys over at Unique UK have been very kind to send this over to me to have a look at and I have been flying this aircraft today and I'm actually very very impressed and I'll tell you about that hopefully a little bit more later in this video. We've got the Healing system which I'm still continuing to play with that you can see down here and I'm going to give you guys a few updates on that and answer a few questions I've seen posted. Before we do all of that I just want to give you some updates on the DJI gear because there's been some stuff going on this week. Specifically number one the new multi-link system for the Inspire 2 is finally available to order. Now I did a video on this a little bit of time ago if you don't know what multi-link is it allows you to connect up to three additional remote controllers to your Inspire 2. So out the box the Inspire Inspire 2 will work in dual ops so you can have remote A and remote B but you can't have any more than two. If you have used that you will also know that it's not very good in certain circumstances and it doesn't always play ball very well and there are a couple of technical reasons for that and one of them is that the antennas for the dual ops are located in the top of the remote controller up behind this area here and the problem with that is that when you're pointing that remote at that one you only get the best signal when they're facing each other like that however that isn't really ideal when you've got a pilot and a camera op so to get around this issue as well as give you the option of an additional two slaves on top of that DJI have released multi-link and it is an adapter that fits onto the remote control you do need one per remote controller so if you were doing it with four you would need four of the adapters it creates a local mesh network with the master remote taking the inputs from the three slaves and then that then sends it back to the aircraft the video signal is not handled by the multi-link system the remote picks up the multi-link signal from each one but the aircraft's video signal comes directly to the remote controllers itself it works on both 2.4 and 5 gigahertz and it it basically allows you to have up to 150 meters distance between the master one and the three additional slaves if you want to go that far. It does give much better reliable performance than the standard dual op setup that you get today. Now there are some questions I want to answer on this because I've seen some confusion and only today I was told myself the correct answer on this. It works with both the standard and the Syndense remote controller in both master and slave configurations. You do not have to use a Syndense as master and you don't have to use a standard remote as slave. You can do whichever way around you want up to four remotes in total. However, the system does give slightly better performance when using it with a Syndense fitted with the patch antenna. Now, I haven't been given a specific reason why that is. However, my, my belief is probably because it's a directional antenna and it gives the signal strong to the remote controller from the aircraft which allows it to then to pass it out via the mesh network to the other ones so that's the most likely reason for that however it is worth noting that you can use a Syndense and a standard remote in any combination there is always one master and there are always three slaves and there are some functionality differences between what each slave can do but it does mean that you can have up to a total of four remotes with your Inspire 2. It's also worth noting this system only works with the Inspire 2 and doesn't work with the Enterprise models either. So it's only Inspire 2, it will not work with the M200, it will not work with the M600 as of today. It is only the Inspire 2 series. As I said, you will need one unit per remote controller you wanna connect. Cost-wise, they are 89 quid in the UK or $99 each in the USA. So if you wanted to do four remotes in the US, it would be $400. DJI are offering some discounts on three packs so if you buy a three pack in the uk it's 253 pounds and if you're going to buy a three pack in the usa it's 286 dollars it's not saving you a great deal of money but every penny helps especially if you're buying three of them now it is finally available to order today you can do it now there is a link to that in the description of this video i haven't got one myself i probably won't be ordering one because i've only got two remotes anyway i was going to have a look at it but i probably not something i can do much with unless i order two of them to be honest um it's very simple it bolts to the back of the remote controller it plugs into the can bus port 
on the back of the remote. If you're already using that canvas port for GPS or DJI Focus, don't worry, it has a canvas pass through as well. So you can still use those additional accessories. If you're connecting it on the Sendent, your canvas is taken up by your patch antenna. Don't worry, as I said, it has got the patch through so you will still be able to use it. As I said, there's a link to it in the description of this video. If you want to order it, please do go check it out. The next thing I want to quickly talk about is the all-in-one smart controller for the Mavic 2 series. It is now available to order in the USA. I haven't got one myself. The guys in the UK have been getting their hands on this all week. You can now order it and get it in the US. There was a slight delay in the USA versus the UK and Europe. I think it was to do with the government shutdown and they must, they must have been waiting on some paperwork or something like that. However, it's now been resolved and it is available to order. Um, on that remote controller for the Mavic 2 series, as it only works with the current models, which is the Mavic 2 Pro and the Mavic 2 Zoom. It will have support for the Enterprise models very, very soon, but out the box, it doesn't. Um, I've been looking at the reports on this this week, and it, you know it's basically a Crystal Sky 5.5 mixed in with the Mavic Remote. I have seen no issues reported with this remote controller whatsoever. So if you're really interested in that remote for the Mavic 2 series, it looks so far to be worth a look. Again, there's a link to it in the description of this video, so if you want to order it, you can do. It isn't the cheapest in the world. You know, I understand some of the complaints around the pricing, but as I said in my other video on it, and if you haven't seen it, please do go check it out. Um, I think the price is fair compared to everything else out there i honestly do think the price is fairly fair but as i said it's available in the us so you can go and get it now next moving over to the healing system now i've been doing a few videos on this i put a few out already um I had a chance to meet up with Ben from 3DXR last week and actually catch up with him while he was doing a job and, and spend a couple of hours with him talking about this system and some other things as well. And first of all, if you're looking to get the Healing or your Pixhawk 2.1, please do go check out the guys over at 3DXR in the UK. They are a fantastic dealer. I really do appreciate them sending this over for me to have a play with. Um, I've got a lot more I want to do on this and talk to you guys about on this as well. There's a few things I wanted to mention and just a few points I wanted to make. I've had some feedback on it and people said, oh, it doesn't do this, it doesn't do that, it should have had this or that. Please understand that. Okay, the hardware on this is probably finally fixed. I don't expect the hardware to change much at all. The software is going to change dramatically in my opinion. This is day one. It's currently running Q Ground Control. The Android system is pretty much locked down. They are going to give you so much more than you've got in this today. So anything I've shown you on this, do not take that as how it is always going to be. I'm trying to give you guys an overview of how it is today. However, don't take that as how it's always going to be. Don't base a purchasing decision on no six months from today thinking oh it doesn't do what i want it to do because it is going to change dramatically and i'm hopefully going to give you updates on that as time goes on i have been playing with it i have been testing it overall i think it's a really good system it does have a few quirks there are some compromises on it i'm not going to pretend there are not um there is no physical mode switch that's the biggest one for me i would have loved to have had a physical mode switch on it um Self-centering gimbals are fine for me and you can't change them to non-self-centering as, as I understand it for plain use. But there are a hundred different ways around that. If you really want to do it, you can um, just set your cruising speed to centre throttle or you can set it as zero throttle there and use just up and down. Um, there are a few other things on it and there are a few other quirks of the way it is today. However, that will change with it outside the box. The other thing I've seen mentioned is about screen brightness, and I'm going to do a video on that specifically. It is on par with other things out there like the Typhoon H, normal phones. Okay, I'm not going to compare it to a Crystal Sky. That would be unfair of me because they are 1,000 nits units. This is not that. It's not even marketed as that. It is not too dim for use in most conditions, in my opinion. I think it'll be absolutely fine. You might want to look at a hood in some extreme weather. However, I think it's going to be okay. For me, where I live in the UK especially, it's going to be okay. Um, I, I certainly won't have problems with it. However, yeah, it's not terrible. It's not really, really bad. I've got some more tests I wanna give you guys on this as well. I wanna show you about the latency, how it is. 
um, I want to show you about uh, further connection setup on the menus. And I've got some of those videos ready to go out, so we're going to hopefully get them out in the near future. One last thing I want to mention on latency is it's, it's quite hard to show this, and there is a technical reason why, in my opinion. This is a HDMI input, so you're going to be relying on the HDMI latency of the device you're plugging it into and that is going to be different on almost every single camera you use so i'm going to try and do this test based on i'm going to try and take off the latency i believe is built into my camera and i've worked this out by connecting it to an external monitor and timing that and that's given me a latency figure now what i'm probably going to do is take off that latency figure from the latency of this that'll give us a ballpark i don't know what the latency is going to be of my monitor and camera setup i'm on a gh5 here right now um, i've got it on an external monitor and it is fairly quick um, there's always going to be some slight uh, variations in this and people say oh it's not uh, the correct way of showing it and it is quite hard to prove the only real way to prove latency is by doing it um, with a diode and a measuring device and it's a, it's a very clever way I saw someone come up with doing it but what I'm going to try and do is give you my opinion on what this is compared to the DJI system and maybe I may even try to compare to the unique um, it's hard to judge from what I've seen so far if it's the system that's quite slow or the HDMI camera I was using. So it is something I'm going to go into a little bit more in one of my other videos. But I will be putting more out on that again, thanks to the guys over at 3DXR. I loved meeting up with Ben. I'm going to go up to the shop and see him very, very soon. He was an absolutely fantastic guy. Spent uh, quite a long time with him, actually. We were do He was doing a small job and I was helping him out with that. And he was doing some stuff with RTK and testing an aircraft. There's a, there's a lot of great stuff around that I could talk about, but that's probably save that for another video finally i'm going to talk about this here and this is the unique typhoon h plus now i had a really long chat with the guys at unique over the uk drone show the commercial operator show in the uk in november i think it was and i got talking to them and, and we just managed to come up with something and say look let's take a look at it let's put it on the channel and have a chat about it now i've had it for a few days i've had a chance to go over the whole package um, I'll do an unboxing later on. I'm not going to do it in this video. I'll do a separate one and take you through some of the stuff. I have flown this aircraft for about, I think, five packs today. It's been used, discharged, used, discharged. Overall, I'm actually very impressed with this little aircraft. Just to give you a base overview of the specs, okay, camera-wise, and that's where the money is on this stuff, because at the end of the day, these are camera drones. It's designed to do filming. It's in the territory of a Phantom 4 Pro. That's the ballpark this aircraft's in. It is 4K, up to 60 frames a second, up to 100 megabytes a second. So that ticks all of the main boxes there for most people. It's six rotors with redundancy, so it means if a motor goes down, the aircraft's not going to fall from the sky. It will continue to fly. It has built-in front object avoidance sensors that are the standard type that are using ultrasonic it has various flight modes like cable cam poi it flies very very nicely and you have the st16 ground station that comes with it now the st16 is you know really here link came after the st16 and you know you can see big brother little brother territory here you really can so let me just bring that over and let me just bring that over to the front. Now, the ST16 is an all-in-one ground station. It has a built-in tablet. It's your remote controller. It has all sorts of controls over the front of it. You've got your landing gear, your camera settings. You've got all sorts everywhere. Built-in Android device. So when you turn it on, it then has all of the flight software on it ready to rock and roll. There are some absolutely fantastic features of this remote and this aircraft especially around the way it controls that camera i had it playing for about 35 minutes and the way you can control the camera on this in my opinion is unlike any of the other aircraft i've flown yes the legs go up so it gives you that similar 360 ability and it is a 360 gimbal as well i should add on this there are no limits on the gimbal so it is a true 360 gimbal it's using slip rings i think um but the way it allows you to control the camera i found extremely easy compared to any other model panning and tilting are just 
so simple and the, you have the ability to set what mode you want the camera to do so you can either set it to move with um, position on the knob so if you set the knob to there it will just move the camera to there and if you set the knob back to 12 o'clock it will move the camera back to 12 o'clock or if you set it into the next mode down it becomes like using the joystick so it, when you move it to there it starts moving slowly and then it starts moving more and more and more and then when you set it back to the center it stops and doesn't move any further so you can have it so it acts like a wheel or like sort of a stick command input and it means you can control the gimbal extremely accurately and i found it i'll be honest i think the control system for the camera on this is better than any other drone i've used it's as simple as that much easier to control much much easier to control it really really is i found myself being able to get very fast very smooth shots no problem at all part of the reason for this is twofold number one it's got a really nice big slider for the camera it really has on the back and i am going to go through all of this a lot more in another video um b you've got the other option on the front here and it's nice to have the option for the camera controls on two switches so this switch controls the pitch of the camera up and down and this switch controls the yaw of the camera left and right now it's not on at the moment but it allows you to do one or the other and it is very simple and very very intuitive it really really is um as i said i flew it for i think five packs and i'm gonna do a lot more talking on this over the next couple of days i'm gonna put a special video out about it but it's a very very interesting aircraft it really really is and if you were looking for something that is not DJI or you wanted something totally different or you wanted something that gives you redundancy then you know what I think this is absolutely a no-brainer it's as simple as that um, we'll talk about it a lot more in another video specifically about it I just wanted to give you guys some of my initial thoughts on it after flying it for a day um, there is no perfect aircraft so like all aircraft there will be downsides there will be things that don't work as well on that as they do other things however at the end of the day, all of these aircraft that we buy for ready to fly, 99% of these are bought for filming. So if you ignore how well the aircraft flies, if you ignore what feature it does and doesn't, you know, all of these lovely features like cable cam, all of that lot, they're, they're fantastic to have. However, the very basics are you want to be able to capture great footage that looks stable, that looks natural and looks smooth. And that's what it's all about. And you know what? this this can do it and this can do it no problems at all um that is it for this video it was just an update to give you guys some info about what's going on there's going to be a lot more uh, to talk about in the next couple of weeks again i want to thank the guys over at unique uk for sending this over to me to have a look at 3dxr in the uk for the hue link um we're going to talk about that a lot more again in the next couple of days please do subscribe to the channel if you like what you've seen there are links to everything i've talked about in this video in the description there are links to that the dji um multi-link you can get that today the remote controller for the mavic 2 series which i don't have um you can order that now in the us the unique as well as the hue link from the guy at 3dxr that's it thank you very much i'll do another video again soon and that is it for this video. If you've liked what you've seen, please do check out. We have over 150 videos on this channel covering everything from DJI right through to the Pixhawk 2 and various other things. We've also got them separated into playlists as well that help you navigate to the ones that might be relevant for you. If you like what you see on the channel, please do subscribe. There is a subscribe button in the bottom right hand corner of every video. And by doing that, you will receive updates on any videos that we release in the future. Finally, there are some links to the products we talk about in the description for each video i would really appreciate it if you are going to buy a product if you would like to buy via those links by supporting the channel it allows us to keep buying products to be able to talk to you guys about that's it thank you for watching and i'll do another video again soon